you see morality is in a moral sense it makes more sense to tell the person not to keep going out and buying new clothes and it makes more sense to tell the person to fix their shoes instead of buying new ones it makes more sense so we don't have to waste resources produ producing others it makes more sense to tell the person not to buy alcohol not to buy fancy foods and just to live a, on a simple diet that will help them to survive and will free up all the money from there and use that to provide housing education food and and medical care for children who are dying that makes more moral sense than telling someone your God-given right to fall in love and reproduce and have children should not be happening because you happen to have manifested in a part of the world where the rest of the world are not keen on sharing its resources with you. Hey guys, so I've had a comment this morning from someone. Now, they seem to have a good heart from some of the other things they've written, but they also seem to be a little confused about a certain topic. And they are ultimately talking about solutions to the poverty and suffering in places like Tanzania. This is one of the, I think it's one of the 20th poorest countries in the world now. And of course, the concept or the idea in the West of population and population control is something that has, oh, I'll just shut this door so I can hear my voice echoing. It's something that has been on the lips of many people around the world discussing these things. Now, it's a complicated subject, and many people don't understand the topic when it comes to developing countries. But I want to point out a few things. The first one is that when I was first researching the concept of population control, I stumbled across a thing called Agenda 21, which was ultimately a Fabian socialist ideology created by the United Nations. And... For all it was about environmental work, it would have been a good way to uh, eventually control the population uh, due to the nature of how it was operating. Now, because of seeing these things and how they can be presented as one thing, like an agricultural solution can actually be something that can control population, I started looking a little deeper. And then I came across something which initially I was shocked to hear because I didn't understand. I didn't have an education on the topic. I didn't live in a developing country. And I stumbled across Bill Gates making a speech where he said that by getting vaccinations right, you can bring the population down. On average, the energy on average for each service and the CO2 being put out uh, per unit of energy. So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Uh, that's back from high school algebra. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15%. But there we see an increase of uh, about 1.3. The second factor is the services we use. This encompasses... And this is where we need to be careful when people are looking for truth, not to jump to conclusions. Now, most people jump to the conclusion that he is literally saying that we're going to kill people with vaccinations. That is not what's happening. Now, I used to be the sort of person, as many are, that stood against all forms of pharmaceuticals, big pharma's bad, vaccinations are bad. But now I'm here and I see children dying of yellow fever and I see children who can't walk because they've had polio and I have children in my care who will never walk, use their arms or speak because they've had such a high fever from things like yellow fever, etc. Then. I see the other children who were vaccinated against these things who don't have yellow fever, the other children who can walk, the other children who haven't had polio who had the vaccine. 
Now, I'm not saying vaccines are, per uh, are perfect and they should be governed by the public. There shouldn't be a huge profitable uh, interest in vaccinating children, etc. There also shouldn't be any control from the military industrial complex on it because who knows, they could experiment. It's not the first time in history if they did experiment on people uh, or add something in which benefits their agenda in some way makes us more subservient but if you just had a pure vaccine for polio or pure vaccine for yellow fever then it's a good thing as i say i've seen it here guys people die without it you know and they are a blessing to those who have it now i'm not saying they're perfect i'm not saying the vaccines are perfectly clean and i'm not saying they're done in a great way but and I'm not saying that it's governed correctly, but for those children here who get yellow fever and stuff like this, then it's a blessing that they get the vaccine. Now here, a lot of the families, they'll have big families on purpose because they are from a culture where many of your children die. I have grandmothers. I have one grandmother just quite came to mind. She has seven of her grandchildren in her care because all eight of her children have died before her from various things, malaria, typhoid, so on and so forth, the normal nasties that exist here, diarrhea, diarrhea is one of the biggest killers here. So, they have big families traditionally, and it's changing now as people get more educated and people live away from the bush and in the towns, they tend to have smaller families now. But that's because out here, in the bush, where I am now, if you have a small family and you have two children and the chances are that your two children traditionally going off history and the people around you will die before you reach old age. The chances are that many will die in childbirth even. The chances are that many will die of malaria before the age of four years old. I think most 70% of deaths from malaria are children under the age of four because they can't explain how they feel their symptoms. So. Because of that, traditionally they have larger families because when you become an old person, you can literally, literally starve to death. If you don't have children to care for you, to look after your land, to look after, to harvest your crops, so on and so forth, you can literally starve to death. I've seen this. I've seen old people who are even today starving to death because they don't have anyone around them to look after them. So this is where the big families come from and the fear of death creates the big families a lot of the time <clears throat> and this is what is traditionally and completely understood by persons dealing with population growth and control in developing countries and this is what bill gates was speaking about if we get good vaccination programs in and people can see that many people are not dying all around them they won't feel the urge to have big families all the time it was a very innocent statement i'm not saying his agenda is innocent. I'm not saying he is innocent and I'm not saying the vaccines are completely innocent but the statement was not that he's going to wipe out the world with dodgy vaccines. The statement was that if enough people are vaccinated and enough people stop dying then families might lean towards having smaller families but for now they don't really see the need in having a smaller family because so many people are dying. <clears throat> so this person basically said as well, so just to clear that up, it's a complicated topic is what I want to get at. Now, another thing this person basically was saying, and many people say this to me, that why do they have children when there's such poverty and, and, and hardship around them, so many horrible ways to die, then they should tell their children don't have any little ones. Well, I want to say something. Many people seem to do that, and they put the blame over into Tanzania and say, let's put it on their doorstep, stop them from breeding. Why don't we make it very, very simple and say the Western money spent on leisure and entertainment and distraction is banned because it's not a necessity. It's got nothing to do with being alive. It's got nothing to do with surviving. It's got nothing to do with your happiness. You can have all of those. You can have happiness without those things. You can survive without those things. You can thrive without those things. Let's ban all of those. Use the money from there and bring it into the developing countries for education, <clears throat> family planning. Let's bring it into these countries for contraception because it's just not available. 
let's bring it into these countries so as the children have a means to support themselves instead of not being allowed to be born at all. You see, guys, when you say they should just stop breeding, you say it as if we live in a just economic system. <clears throat> we don't. Africa is the most material rich continent on the planet. According to our economic system, those with the raw materials are the wealthiest. That's what it's based around. So why are they the poorest? Because the Western systems have strangled and they strangled their development. The Western systems capitalize on their raw materials. The Western systems loan their money and enslave them with the debt from there forevermore. Now, to say here in Tanzania they should stop breeding because they're poor is class eugenics. You're basically saying you're poor, you shouldn't be allowed to breed any further, only allow us more wealthy persons in developed countries to, to have that privilege. When you could be looking closer to home and saying, instead of me having this luxury, this luxury, this luxury, this extremely nice tasty food, this alcohol, this whatever, these nice new clothing, this all of these things that we use so much resource and money on based on desires, why don't we ban them? Why don't we say to ourselves, I ban myself from those things so those children can have a life. Because we never bring it closer to home, because we're not interested in affecting ourselves in that. It's easier to put the blame somewhere else, whether you realize you're doing it or not, and it becomes a class eugenic thing, where you say they're poor, they shouldn't breed, because it's not fair for the children. Well, as I say, we could easily push it on the West and say, don't you waste your money on these entertaining things, these desirable things. When your clothes are ripped and torn, you fix them like they do in developing countries. And the money you would have used there, you use to make sure the children are not hungry, the children don't have no medical care, and the children are not homeless sleeping outside. You see, morality, is in a moral sense, it makes more sense to tell the person not to keep going out and buying new clothes, and it makes more sense to tell the person to fix their shoes instead of buying new ones. It makes more sense, and so we don't have to waste resources produ producing others. It makes more sense to tell the person not to buy alcohol, not to buy fancy foods, and just to live a, on a simple diet that will help them to survive, and will free up all the money from there, and use that to provide housing, education, food, and and medical care for children who are dying. That makes more moral sense than telling someone your God-given right to fall in love and reproduce and have children should not be happening because you happen to have manifested in a part of the world where the rest of the world are not keen on sharing its resources with you. The solution to overpopulation is that word, sharing. The solution to overpopulation is not telling people they can't follow their hearts, fall in love and have a child. The solution to population issues is sharing, number one, because sharing can produce educated people. It can produce the resources to ensure that children don't die in horrible ways. It can support children to have education so their children are educated about why they don't need to worry about these things. It can provide the food for a child so they don't starve. It all begins with sharing. And sharing is not about giving what you have, Sharing is about looking at what you have and accepting that some parts of what you have don't necessarily keep you alive or allow you to survive. Those are not necessities. So those are the things that you can share with others. That's what sharing is. Evaluating what you can truly do without, without it jeopardizing your health and without it jeopardizing uh, your, your food source or your shelter and sharing that. That's what sharing's about. Now, if every billionaire did that, 2% of the liquid wealth of billionaires would end the medical deficit on the planet. Literally, 2% of their wealth can end the medical deficit costs all over the planet for everybody from, from in the West where they don't have insurance to developing countries. 2% just of billionaires alone. And then we look to other countries to say they should do it. No, we should look to ourselves because it is ourselves and our own way of life in the West which are causing these problems.
And you know, one day it will change and continents like Africa will gain their power back. And then where will the West be? We'll be in much weaker economies and we'll have to learn to be happy with less, just as, as many of the African countries have over the centuries. I say decades for now, but certainly over the centuries since our influence of colonialism. So the issue of population control doesn't lay in telling people not to breed, not to have their God-given right to fall in love and have a child, but in telling people to share things that do not in any way affect their survival and telling nations to share resources that do not in any way affect their survival to allow for children to have a safe entry into life allow for children to have the food and shelter they need and the medical care that they require. So, this is how I have come to see it and I will never accept that saying that people who are poor can't breed because the children will have a worse life as a solution when there are people, even if they are not super wealthy, a little bit wealthy, that can share and change that. So, as always, the solution starts with each individual going inside and sussing out what it is that they can share. If it's not money and resources, maybe it's time and prayers. But whatever it is, it all starts with the individual. And it starts with that word, sharing. Hence our name, Share Tanzania. So, okay. Much love, guys.